But let's go straight to our cover story. Its face is a man named Neville Roy Singham. Who's he? Well, he's an American technocrat. He lives in Shanghai. He once founded a technology consultancy company called ThoughtWorks. Its website describes Singham as a globally renowned information technology thought leader. But now, a major New York Times investigation has accused Singham of buying influence on behalf of China. Now, some of you are thinking, how exactly do you buy influence? Well, it's really not that difficult. And India has also been mentioned in that particular investigation. According to the New York Times, even in India, Singham reportedly poured money into a website called NewsClick. And this website has now been accused of being soft on China, even biased towards China. Singham is accused of buying this bias between 2018 and 2021. NewsClick apparently received money from four different entities linked to Singham. Now, of course, the entire NewsClick issue and what is happening in India has been the subject of considerable debate and discussion, and the entire matter is now before the court. So we will leave that aside for the moment. It is, it is, it is subject. Is. But essentially, the New York Times point is that there was a particular template that was applied worldwide to news websites, YouTube channels, print publications, you name it. This happened in India, it happened in Brazil, it happened in South Africa, in the United States, Ghana, Zambia. This is, for example, another news, online news startup that Singham funded, according to the, uh, to the New York Times. New Frame, based out of Johannesburg, South Africa. One of his former reporters said, the publication's editor removed criticism of China's labor practices. Another editor resigned in 2022, citing New Frame's soft coverage on China. You see, the bias is meant to influence real-world politics. It is meant to paint China in a good light. Tell China's story, or China's version of an alternate reality. One where Taiwan is part of China, where Beijing was not irresponsible in handling COVID-19. An alternate reality where the nine dash line exists and where everything within it rightfully belongs to China. At least that's the version of reality that there are some websites and some news influencers that they would like to push. Obviously, Beijing would like to push this. And now the New York Times is saying that Singham and others are spending millions to fund this alternative reality or this narrative. The New York Times claims Singham and his network regularly met congressional aides. It says they train politicians in Africa several times a year. According to the New York Times, this is all being funded by Singham's shell companies and organized by his network. The goal is to create an echo chamber where the Chinese narrative is celebrated, promoted, and then when protesters or politicians paid by Singham or trained by Singham say something pro-China, NYT claims that Chinese media accounts retweet people and organizations in a systematic manner. They said if it's done this at least 120 times since February 2020. Now look, let me be clear on something. There's nothing wrong with people having a particular point of view or believing whatever it is that they want to believe. There is nothing wrong with China Daily or Global Times saying that, oh, we are here to tell you uh, this is the point of view according to China. And there may be people who accept that and there may be people who buy that. And there may be people who generally think that China is great. That's fine. It's a free world and people, well, it's not a free world everywhere, but outside China, it actually is a free world in many parts of the country. And there, it is absolutely okay for people to believe whatever they want to believe. The question, though, comes if there is deception that is happening, if people are believing they're reading something and are not being told it's actually been paid for by Beijing or by anybody else. That is when an actual question arises. And that, I think, is what the New York Times article also raises question marks over. You could be left-wing. You could believe that China is great. You could believe and actually be doing things that you think are correct. But if somewhere along the way there's deception that has happened and you believe you're writing or reading something which you actually believe in but actually has been paid for by somebody else, then there is a real question mark there which you need to think through. So what the New York Times is really saying is that China, through some of its foot soldiers, like allegedly Singham, 
is essentially trying to make you fall for lies through the back door. According to this article, Neville Roy Singham is not just one person in a global nexus through which China has actually penetrated media, the discourse of some of the world's leading democracies and other methods. If this view is correct, then Beijing is using and paying third parties to wage a silent war, a war of narratives and a war of influence. And you shouldn't be surprised by any of that because, let's face it, China does have a history of using tactics to try to get exactly what it wants. It wants to dominate the global narrative. It wants to dominate the globe. It wants to dominate Asia. And it does certainly want to dominate the South China Sea. And here again, we saw something interesting, perhaps alarming, happening over the last few days. And let's face it, a large part of the world believes that Beijing does not actually have any legal basis to the latter, to the South China Sea. And therefore, it is using muscle power to bully smaller nations. Look at this. This was not an accident or an accidental leak. This was China water cannoning and blocking a Philippines vessel. It happened on the 5th of August in the disputed South China Sea, near the Second Thomas Shoal, or to be more specific. Now, this is a submerged reef that both Beijing and Manila claim. The Philippines has stationed a rusting World War II-era American ship in the shoal, which the Philippines troops use as a base. Beijing wants Manila to tow away the ship and to leave the area to accept Chinese sovereignty over this entire area. The question is, are such acts of Chinese aggression the new normal? From waging silent wars for influence on land to water cannoning vessels on sea, where does it stop? And let me now put that question to Lisa Curtis, Senior Fellow and Director of the Indo-Pacific Security Program at the Center for a New American Security. Lisa, uh, thank you so much for joining us, Lisa. Now, water cannons being used by Chinese ships uh, on Filipino ships. Where is it headed? Do you think China is going to ratchet up the aggression all the way till, I don't know, till, till they invade Taiwan or something? Well, I think what's happening is, is China's trying to intimidate the Philippines in particular. And this, you know, follows um, other uh, acts of intimidation that they've been engaging in. Of course, on Saturday, it was water cannons against the Philippines vessel that was trying to resupply the uh, docked ship, the Sierra Madre, which has actually been there since 1999. Uh, the Philippines has had that, that ship dock there to defend its maritime uh, claims and interests. Uh, because of course, uh, in the 1990s, China um, took control of Mischief Reef, which is another maritime feature that is in the Philippines' exclusive economic zone. So this was part of a pattern. Well, Lisa, this is also a week where China was very much in the news because of the New York Times article and the accusations that propaganda is being done and influence has actually been bought, made headlines in India as well because an Indian website was, was named there. Now, I know some of the people named in the NYT article has come out and said, it's a new wave of McCarthyism that is being unleashed upon us just because we are, we are uh, left-wing and just because they are, they are propagating a socialist cause doesn't mean they should be dragged in. What's your own sense of it? Is, this, is, this, uh, is China running a sophisticated propaganda campaign which, uh, which is being paid for uh, or, or are some publications which are broadly left-wing just being dragged into this? Well, look, I think we need to follow the facts. The Chinese are actively um, pushing their ideology, their propaganda. We know this. Um, and they try to hide their hand in doing so. So I think, you know, the New York Times uh, investigative reporting is important because it shows us, you know, where the money is coming from. It, it demonstrates how positions of certain organizations have changed over time to be more uh, pro-China. Um, so I think it's important that we ask these questions. Nobody wants um, another wave of McCarthyism. Um, you know, that that was not uh, good for anybody. But I don't think we can simply, you know, wave um, these financial connections away 
Um, and we have to be smart and prudent about what the Chinese are doing because they do have a sophisticated campaign pushing their own ideologies. Lisa Curtis, thank you so much for joining us on This World. Thank you.